Hey everybody, Ryan here. We're gonna, gonna take a quick look at uh, Kursk 1943 through a sort of an unboxing here. Uh, it's a new title that I just got this week um, from a Polish publisher, um, Tactica and Strategia, I think is how you pronounce it, or the closest to it. Um, it's essentially tactics and strategy in Polish. And for one reason or another, it sort of struck me uh, this past week um, to sort of look for operational Kursk games. And it turns out there's a, a dearth of them. Now, we see Kursk usually um, simulated on the far ends of the scales. We've got um, very small tactical battles, tank for tank. Uh, in titles like Panzer, I think there's there's got to be scenarios for advanced squad leader or squad leader regarding that. Uh, or you've got Kursk being dealt with on a strategic level. I know a recent issue of uh, C3I magazine, um, Trevor Bender did a design about Kursk. But Kursk only occupies about a turn or two. The rest of it are um, is about the Soviet counteroffensives uh, throughout the, the rest of the uh, late summer and fall of 1943. So when I saw that not only was there a operational game on Kursk, but it was in stock um, at Noble Knight, um, I decided to pull the trigger and uh, to see um, what it was like. So it wasn't terribly expensive, it was affordable. Um, and like I said, it's from a Polish publisher. So we'll go ahead and we'll crack it open and we'll take a look at some of the components. Um, uh, won't do a, a big rules overview. overview. Uh, I haven't read them. I've sort of glossed over them uh, and get a good feel for them. But we'll, we'll still take a look at the, um, the components, the map, uh, and some of the things that stand out to me. The first thing I like right away is um, got this magnetic magnetic lip here. Um, I don't know, it's just got a nice feel. I like um, that it came like that. Um, I think this must be the sort of standard box that they put all their titles in. Um, it didn't come shrink wrapped. It came in a bag. Um, We'll see why it probably didn't come shrink wrap, just because it comes with um, English specific rules. But uh, we've got dice, of course. We have the series rules here. Um, we have an entire series about the Second World War, a bunch of battles. Um, as you can see, it's in Polish. Um, so this particular um, copy, sans. Uh, the illustrations um, isn't going to be terribly helpful. Um, but it does have uh, the combat results table uh, in the back. But I think more importantly, it's, it has a um, sort of it's like a mini catalog of the different titles that they have. Uh, not all of them uh, centering on the Second World War, but um, a lot of them are. Um, you know, we've got Normandy, Corson, the Corson Pocket, we've got Stalingrad, Budapest, Berlin, etc. Um, so apparently the this publisher has been publishing games since 89. Um, and they've put over over 200 titles. They have a I think a companion magazine that comes out with it. But these are the series of rules. Um, those are replicated here in English. Um, since this game is primarily not for English audiences, it's my guess. Um, you know, they use standard printer paper, and um, someone diligently went through and translated it um, and went ahead and included them in there, which is very gracious. Um, I was also kind of excited to sort of try something out of the mainstream. Most of my games are either from the usual suspects. DMT, Multiman, Revolution, Compass, etc, etc, etc. So to find uh, not just a um, 
underrepresented publisher, a smaller publisher. Um, well, I guess I shouldn't say small because they've published for uh, over 200 titles in the past, you know, over 30 years. So maybe not small, but maybe a more diverse in terms of international um, designs and opinions um, to see, um, you know, what's not necessarily available here in the States. So like I said, this is a series rules. Uh, so I imagine most of these would apply to mo uh, a lot of the other titles. Um, and that's about 20, 25 pages. And then here we've got uh, about 45 pages and these are the series rules. All right, I'm sorry, not the series rules, the uh, game specific rules. Um, laying it down, you know, different phase, phases, movement, zones of control, combat. Um, the combat results table is based off of uh, uh, 2D6, so uh, 12 result. Um, so a little more variability in terms of, or nuance in terms of um, losses that can be taken. Um, there's air power, uh, which factored um, pretty importantly in the Battle of Kursk. Uh, headquarters, command tools, supplies, um, and then near the back we get to uh, the scenario setup. The game is essentially two scenarios. We've got Kursk, which is the northern shoulder of the Kursk salient, and then we have uh, the southern salient, uh, which is Prakorobaka. I've never actually known how to <laughs> pronounce that, so forgive my ignorance. Um, but that's where the large uh, armored clash happened, basically near the climax of um, the Battle of Kursk. Uh, so there's setup information, victory conditions, etc., etc., etc. There's a CRT. Um, artillery factors heavily in the game. Um, so do so do minefields and fortified positions, um, as you would expect from a Kursk uh, title. So we'll save the map. Um, it's interesting how it's packed. Um, and like I said earlier, I think this is their standard box because the Kursk map, the dimensions of the of the battle are narrow um, and tall just because of the shape of the Germans' um, thrusts. So I, I think the, the the map they wound up going with didn't quite fit into their standard box, which would be my guess. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, next we have our counters. We'll get up close here uh, and show you um, how these look. Yeah, these come in pretty uh, thick card stock, which is nice. Um, they punch out very easily. I imagine they'll be easy to clip. Depends. Sometimes the the makeup of I've had titles where clipping the the counters um, it wasn't quite clean. It was um, I don't know if the, the, the material is more fibrous or it just had a hard time really cutting through. Anyway, uh, these are nice and thick. Um, I think the Soviet order of battle is a little different from the, the German. Um, each of these counters is effectively um, a division. It's denoted by the, the data symbol. We've got artillery. We've got armored regiments here. Some of them are brigade, brigades. And some of them, I don't know if the Soviets really used regiments on this level. But you can see that the, the Germans have regiments here, um, and their regiments form their constituent divisions. Germans here in the light blue. And here are the rest of the German counters uh, with the dreaded Waffen SS in black there. So, having corps or army commanders. But uh, an expert on the battle, I don't really know the order of battle that well. Um, but uh, that's one of the reasons why we buy these games um, to help facilitate that. Now, the most perplexing thing, um, and it's not really that that big of a deal, but the rest of the counters aren't really counters. They're just these um, sheets. Um, 
And these counters are pretty important. I mean, these are supply counters, I think these are some sort of breakthrough counters, bridge counters. I'm assuming these are control counters. And then we've got fixed fortifications, which I think if a unit can expend all its movement points to basically dig in. Peculiar, I don't know if that was a mistake or if that's just a cost um, saving measure. Um, regardless, nothing a little uh, a little DIY um, grease, elbow grease can't uh, handle. It would be pretty easy to cut out. I'm not sure if these will be worth, I mean, we have to do an exacto knife for those. Uh, it may be better to maybe use some sort of blank auxiliary counter that'll stand in for a fortification. Um, but yeah, that, that's the only sort of small peculiarity. Outside of that, there's also really no player aids or um, supplemental like tracks or anything. Um, there is a time track listed on the map. Uh, and we'll go ahead and spread the maps out and take a look at those. All right, as you can see by the size, you can kind of see where I'm going. It's because it's a battle that or well, a design that also is focused on the pincers, the the uh, avenues of assault. The you know the rest of the salient doesn't really matter. We've got the Germans in the north breaking through, attempting to break through, and then of course the Germans here in the south attempting to break through with Kursk located a smack dab in the center there. And now in reality, in the northern. Uh, part the German assault ground down very quickly. Um, they had uh, some a multitude of breakthroughs um, here. Um, they got as far as uh, the namesake of the um, of, of this campaign, the, the, or of this scenario. Um, I think that I butchered earlier that I'm not even going to attempt. Uh, but there was a large. Um, armored engagement there. Point being, we've got these two scenarios that could be linked. Um, it's a little annoying that there's a, uh, you know, a basically half inch uh, border. Um, so if you attempted to put the maps together, you would either have to cut them, which probably won't be that big of a deal considering uh, I'll have to do some of that DIY work on the um, on the informational counters. Um, like I said, there's really no tracks. I mean, there's this, uh, here we have the uh, time track. I'm assuming each turn is a day. Um, this can go run from the 5th of July to the 22nd of July. Reality was called off before that, but again, this is uh, offering operational what ifs if the Germans were able to break through um, and actually seize the critical railway junction of of Kursk. Um, as you can see, I mean, without zooming in too close yet to the map, uh, you've got all these fortified lines, um, which, you know, the Soviets perfected defense in depth here at this battle, that even if the Germans were able to reach the first line or the second line or the third, there was just another network of anti-tank guns, um, minefields um, and obviously uh, other armored uh, vehicles uh, to stop them along the way. I think from what I understand, uh, I can't remember what book it was I read. Um, something Armor and Blood, I think. Let me double check. Yes, it was Armor and Blood by Dennis Showalter. Sort of a Finnish um, single volume on Kursk. Um, but from what I remember from that, he really imparted the, the first sense of combined arms between um, tank formations and air. And I'm not talking about Blitzkrieg style, which obviously the Germans had sort of perfected, but this was one of the first large battles where massed air formations would come in and just decimate, um, uh, decimate. Uh, tank positions or armored columns. Uh, from my understanding, the Germans more used Stukas as basically 
forward artillery because their artillery couldn't keep pace with tanks. They, they were very precise with the use of um, their munitions and bombs from Stukas to as if it were artillery. My understanding is that Kursk was one of the first places uh, during the Second World War, in particular, probably the Eastern Front, where air power, air power for ground attack was massed and could make um, a tangible difference uh, on the wide open uh, spaces of, uh, of Kursk. But anyway, enough of that. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the map. Sadly, there's no terrain key on the map either, so I'm not sure. I mean, obviously we've got some forests here, roads, minor roads. I'm sure that this is some sort of rail, minor river, major river, or reverse, probably a major river, minor. I don't know about the subtle shading as if that's just decorative, considering some of these lines run in the middle. I'm assuming that these are just considered... Um, clear terrain or hills um but i kind of like the map art um it's not really flashy i prefer a little muted probably looks closer um to the usual topography or the topography topography of the area um and this is the southern flank we've got belgograd here Obviously, it was mar uh, launched here. I think that one of the great successes of Kursk was not only the absorption of the German assault, uh, it also um, was followed by uh, major Soviet counteroffensives that basically collapsed um, into Belgograd and essentially kicked off uh, an entire struggle for. Um, Ukraine throughout the summer of 1943 and then here we've got uh, Kursk itself and then we've got um, the northern shoulder here which I indicated before it didn't get uh, rolling the same way that the southern front did all right I think that's all I've got to share regarding uh, Kursk 1943 not sure when I'll get it to the table, um, but uh, it's nice to have in my back pocket uh, when I feel like visiting this campaign. Um, but I thought I'd also just give it a little bit of exposure uh, and sort of share a new publisher that I found, uh, and hopefully um, the title will bear fruit when I do get it to the table. So again, um, if you're still around, thanks for watching, and we'll go ahead and catch you guys uh, on the next one.